Hey folks, I'm having such a terrible time with this read that I thought I got to get this on video because this is absolutely the bad read example. This is terrible. Now, let me show you. There, you see that delay there? Okay, so that little chirping going on, that little delay, that's when the reed does not vibrate for a split second. That's what that's what's happening. All right, now you're hearing it more, right? Okay, so when the reed does not vibrate, that usually means that there's something wrong with the reed. Okay, quick caveat here. It is possible for the player to create these chirps and the reed is not at fault. And the way that that happens is when the player squeezes the reed with their lips and lifts the reed up too high so that it gets so close to the edge and it just creates that chirp. And again, very little vibration, not enough air going into the uh, instrument, and then you get those chirps. But the way that you know that it's the player and not the reed is by how out of tune you are. So if you are playing very sharp, or even if you're one of those people that has to pull the mouthpiece out from the cork in order to get it in tune, then chances are pretty high that the problem is the player and not the reed. Uh, a good test is to bend the notes. So let's see if I can make the notes bend up and down. Now that's barely even a half step and usually I can do more than a half step. Aha, see on my D I can't even get a half step. How do you know that the reed is horrible and you got to get rid of it? And the way that I know is because there's a point at which the volume level gets low and then it just disappears. There it was, see? As the volume level starts to drop, it just shuts off. So normally when I have this problem, what's going on is that my reed is making a frown, okay, or a rainbow. This is a bad reed, folks. You are not going to get any good sound out of this. What's happening is this part of the reed touches the top first, and then the sides barely touch at all, and so you're really not getting the reed to vibrate on the mouthpiece properly. Uh, a good read, by the way, should look more like this when you're done playing it, okay? When you're done playing it, it should have a little bit of a bow in it. Not always, but that would be much better. That's a sign of a good read. Um, mostly, you're just going to see them flat. So if your read is flat, this is also good. But this, my friends, this is a no-go, deal breaker, get rid of it gone. Okay, and one more thing to check on a reed is if you have something that you can depend upon as a flat surface, uh, what to do is to check to see if the reed is bowed in that direction, right? If it's curving down. And I can see a little bit of a curve. Let me see if I can get it in the camera. You can see a little bit of light through the the bow and the reed. Okay. That's another indication that this reed is ready for the garbage. Also, uh, from this point of view, you can see the frowny bow a little bit better because the reed actually rocks from side to side. Look at that. Look at that. It's actually rocking from side to side. That's how bow. That's how badly bowed this reed is. Oh my gosh, it's a wonder I could play this at all. <laughs> now you know some of the problems that you've been having and you've been wondering why. <laughs>
it's because your read is no good. My experience with these problems, by the way, is there is no remedy. There is no way to get rid of this bow here. Um, and then likewise, if this is bowed in a frowny way, you know, you might try to take your fingers like this and you try to bend it back into the proper shape. But you know what? It's only, if it works, it's only going to last a few seconds, maybe a minute or so. So, no. Toss it. Bye. <laughs> See you guys next time.